everybody! Alright, so I'm making this video to talk about some of the experiences I had this summer and I'm making it to introduce my friend Joseph and um, he also made a video about alien abduction so it's kind of piggybacking off of that video he did. So, where do I even begin? Um, okay, so this summer I had, I, we all were kind of experiencing the Ascension Energy Rumble, June, July, August, September, and some of us still feel it even now in October. So, part of my experience, eh, there were so many, it was very hard for me. It's been very, very hard for me. I'm used to having interactions with alien beings who share love, understand love, are balanced with love as we feel it, but even more intense than we feel it. <laughs> very, very intense reflections of love. And so I had quite an experience that was not the most warm uh, experience with alien beings. And that was about, I would, that happened in September. So September, you know, throughout the summer, the spirit realm was really telling me it was time to reconnect with my alien friends again because I'd kind of gotten uh, kind of got diverted from that. I was doing a lot more spiritual work and exploring spirit realms and the light and the dark sort of sides of a spiritual universe. And so come September, you know, from all the ascension energy, I just became really disconnected even more so and really uncomfortable even talking to my alien friends. I just felt really uncomfortable. I was filled with all kinds of, I mean, I was just stumbling through the months. And so anyway, if September came around and I, I said, okay, I, I agree it's time for me to start making those interactions again. So I told the universe, I trust, I'm trusting now and I'm going to go ahead and start opening my heart up to having alien interactions in my life again. Well, this was about the time, too, that I did some healing work for Annabelle, who had had quite an interesting scenario take place in the astral plane. So, and, and her friends were basically kind of... I don't know how to describe them. The first the first video I made with her, it was not greys that I saw. It was more like a blue-skinned alien being. They were taller, maybe like in the six-foot range, not incredibly tall, with really black eyes, big black eyes, and they had some sort of rumbliness right here. And that's who I saw. That's what I saw the first round. The second round, I saw a different version, more like grey-skinned, really, really sweet, really loving. But still, the really massive black eyes, they had a small mouth, but it was enough they could still smile, and they could even glow as well. It was such a loving experience. The second round was such a loving experience. The first round, I, I had seen these blue beings. I'd never seen this version before. I know I made a video about blue aliens. I've done a painting on them, and that experience was quite similar to this one that I had in September as well. Um, I'll have to put some links to videos. They're the sort of weird dream experiences I've had with them, and also odd pregnancy scenarios. I don't have a lot of answers to everything I experience, so I just choose acceptance and know it is all part of you know, the global, the universal community, my spiritual pathway, and my human experience. I mean, how do you bundle that all up? Um, how does my human mind ex understand half the things that take place in this life or this world or this universe? So anyway, it's important I have this conversation. I hope I'm getting to the point here. <laughs> all of these points are important. So in September, I made that commitment. I opened up... Um, and said I'm ready to trust. The first beings I chose to trust or interact with were the blue ones with the big eyes that I saw with Annabelle because I needed to understand why I didn't feel comfortable with them. I needed to, I was thinking a lot more about the littler blue aliens that I was interacting with back at the sort of in 2015, the fall of 2015. They kind of tapered out after in, into 2016. I didn't really see them again until Annabelle's thing. And then they were taller and skinnier, lighter blue skin. But anyway, so I, I said, I opened up my heart and I said, okay, I trust you. And I started, they, they immediately said, you trust us. Why do you trust us? And I say, well, because I need to, I need to understand you better. I need to understand what you mean to me more. I don't know what it is, but I'm choosing you to start trusting. 
to begin with. If if I can go in, if if Annabelle can have a relationship that's trustworthy with you, I need to understand this better. Because I don't trust you, and I need to learn how to heal that part of me, right? So anyway, these beings, they're very... All right, so I'm supposed to, I'm ha my spirit guides are kind of helping me through this conversation. So after, after I had made this discussion, I had this discussion with them at Gray's Lake. I was talking to them for a little bit, and that night I went home, and, um, you know, a couple days had passed, and I, I was continuing to share loving energy with them, continuing to share motivations that I was reaching out, and I was open to learning more about them. So... A few days later, or later that week, or whatever, I started coming down with the same t terrible nightmares that I would have when I was dealing with the blues back last year. And the nightmares are just, oh, they never end. They're horrible. And they're sort of like, I don't know, it's just one, one screen, from one screen to the next screen to the next screen of some complicated scenario. I'm trying to solve the problem, and it's whether or not I am able to outsmart the problem. You know, it's just, it's just, got, it was just, I just wake up and it's just like, oh my god, will you please stop? And then I started, I was just so derailed, I was so miserable, it was hard to sleep. And I was like, okay, I remember now. I remember now what it was like hanging out with you guys last year. And I didn't enjoy this that much either at that time. This, I need to figure this out. So I, I would have conversations with him in the middle of the night. And I would, I would either get really angry and I would just start and visualizing myself burning their skin off in order to get them to stop. Because they were hurting me. So I wanted to hurt them back, right? Well, that would inspire them to... To have sort of like a, I don't know how you describe it, it's sort of like a, a pre-programmed response. So if I respond in this way, they have a pre-programmed response of identical sort of flavor. But it was not, it was, it was more so, it, oh, it was just terrible. It was more like, um, the response that would ripple back into my head was just so fabricated it was so. It was not a not. It was not natural. It was. It was like a mechanical response. And it was, if I was angry, then the response would be also angry. If I was loving and kind, then the response would be fake and loving and kind. But it was never love. It was never truly love. It was never truly anger. It was never truly many of the things, many of the emotions that we have. It never. It was so fabricated. It was terrible. It was absolutely terrible. So. I couldn't seem to get through to them to please stop or to, no matter how I approached it, no matter how I approached the conversation, they could not understand me. <laughs> and obviously me not sleeping and me feeling derailed from these terrible dreams and me just, I mean, I finally chose to trust and this is what I get. It's like, thanks universe, I finally choose to trust and this is what I get. The reality is I had to face this. I didn't realize I was having interactions with them. They hadn't kind of come into clarity until I chose to re-explore and the relationship. It was important that I did this. It was actually important that I opened the box. It was the only way I could actually heal the relationship and create understanding between us. So I had, I told my friend Joseph about it and um, I met Joseph back in February and we both have a very similar spiritual healing knack. It's very similar how we do, do journey healings for people. His, his style is similar to mine but of different variation of the same. So it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool when we get to do healing together. We've been doing some healing work together and it's really fun to kind of compare notes and talk about our spiritual experiences and that sort of thing. So I was telling him I was having a really rough time. I needed him to help me. And so he did a journey healing for me. And what he discovered was these blue aliens were actually interacting with my astral reflection. So how many reflections of spirit do we have? Like, I don't know how to define it. I'm still trying to make sense of it. As a spiritual healer, souls fragment and fragment and fragment and fragment. You can have fragments, millions and millions, trillions of fragments of your one soul can fragment off like more than you could imagine. And so here we are. What is this? Am I my higher self or am I a fragmented part of my higher self? Or what is the spiritual energy that is within this reflection, right? I'm just, my spirit guides are telling me I'm supposed to call, call it my soul. People will understand what that means. So I call it my soul. So my soul is also intertwined with this sort of denser reflection. The reality that we live in, we call it 3D or 
it's a physical realm although it's never physical every realm is still spiritual there's just more density there's more of a of the vibration is different so we don't have the manifesting capabilities that we have when we're more spirit than we are you know human or physical so as human beings that's why it's so challenging to be human because it's hard to feel your relationship with the spirit realm. It's hard to feel your relationship with alien beings. The reality is you are spiritual. You are in a spiritual body. This physical body is a spiritual body. And my soul is also intertwined with this physical matter as well. And it's not physical, it's spiritual. So people who astral project, they go into what's the reality they go into. Same reality. It looks just like this one, right? You actual project, where do you go? You can see your body is sleeping and you're actually entering into a world that looks just like this one because it is this one. It happens just to be a tiny little thin veil between that reality and this reality. So when human beings are ascending, where are we actually ascending to? I'm quite convinced we're ascending into that manifesting reality. Because when you're in that reality, you can do whatever you want. It's your world. It's your experience, your choice. You can be, you can create light, you can create dark, you can talk to angels, you can talk to aliens, you can do, can have all of those experiences in that astral world, whereas here we feel limited, we feel like we're trapped or stuck in the outline of, you know, the rules of creation in this dimension, in this realm, in this reality, but when you leave this spiritual body, this physical body, you go into an astral realm and you have the the capacity of a soul. You have more infinite capacity. So you have alien beings that are interdimensional. What's that mean exactly? They can roam that plane of existence. And they can roam this plane of existence. They can roam other planes, other dimensions of reality. The lighter it goes, the more spirit, right? The lighter your body, the more spiritual. And then you get denser and denser. Now you have sort of a human body is really dense, right? In comparison to some alien beings who live like in a 5D reality or however you want to call it. The alien beings can traverse these dimensions. And so what Joseph discovered was they had taken my astral body, my spirit, my spirit associated with this body, and were doing experiments on it. And they basically had cut my head off, cut my neck, cut my shoulders, arms, uh, body was in pieces, he said. So he saw my body completely in pieces. Was it my physical body? No, it was my astral body. Thing is, my astral body is still associated with this one, and it was feeding into my dreams, which were absolutely terrible. They were nightmares. They were absolute nightmares. And, and so, and how they were reacting to me, so in my, how my astral body is speaking through my physical body, speaking through my astral body, saying, please stop. Well, now they're just uh, touching other parts of me and seeing what the response is. So they have no capacity to comprehend pain and suffering, emotional reactions, love, uh, anger, frustration, pain. They do not... They cannot associate. They cannot comprehend our emotions. So when he had gotten there... He'd, he'd experienced them. He talks about this in his video, too. So this is his first video he's ever made, other than two of his journey-style healings. And we did those two journeys. He, we did them at the exact same time. So you can watch my videos, and you can watch Joseph's videos. But anyway, um, so he talks about that. He talks about his relationship with this astral realm, as, spiritual, as in a spiritual realm. It's a spiritual realm, or is it an astral realm? There's a dense physical plane. Like, what do you call it? I mean, you decide what it means to you. He calls it a spiritual realm because you're, you're, you are disconnected to this density and you have infinite cap capabilities. So anyway, he'd had a long conversation with these blue aliens with the big black eyes and sort of a bunchy, bunched sort of skin here. And, it, um, they're kind of creepy looking, I'm not going to lie, but so he had a conversation with them and he was, um, he basically put my body, my astral body back together. And then he, I had absorbed all of the pain and suffering I'd been feeling and then put it into their hearts. He had take it, he said it was very, it took time for them to register or connect or understand because they don't talk like us. They don't talk through emotions. They talk through logic or science or, or a mathematical format or however you want to define it. They don't understand. They have no understanding. What, they did not think that they were hurting me. They did not think at all that they were hurting me. This is a huge discovery. This is a huge discovery. The reason why this is a huge discovery is a lot of people are having similar interactions 
in the astral plane. It feels like the physical plane, but you're in the astral plane. And so Joseph and I, Joseph is really the one that had the Eureka moment. But um, basically, I okay, I'm talking to my spirit guides here because I don't want to overstep myself. I'm just going to finish up what he discovered with the blue aliens before I say anything else. So in that interaction with them, he was able to help them understand that he was they were causing me pain. And in that interaction, there was quite, um, it was special because they came to a realization about their own species and their own choices. They they actually had, a tr had shown him the history of their species, the history of their kind and their kind had been quite they they had emotions at one time and they chose to shut down all the emotions because they were too violent and they and so they got rid of more and more and more emotions until they had absolutely no emotions at all not even love not even the ability to to have sexual interactions with each other they let everything go they they released themselves from every single emotion and so this interaction was really important for them because they didn't they were not able to feel before this. They didn't know that they were actually harming my physical body and they had no intention of actually creating pain in me. It sounds really jacked up. It's like, okay, you're taking an astral body and cutting it into pieces and watching the energetic response and you don't think that's creating pain. <laughs> well, it was creating pain for me and they didn't know. And so Joseph had that interaction with them as a really big deal. And that's why I made a second follow-up video for Annabelle where I did additional healing for her. And I've been real skittish about it because I don't, I mean, you do that to somebody's astral body and their physical body does have a recollection and it feels uncomfortable, right? It feels like I want to rip your head off and I hate your guts. <laughs> I don't trust you, pieces of shit. <laughs> How else do you define it? You feel, you feel violated. You feel... It, like horrible it's horrible so I have to learn how to undo that training right because the reality is I don't I I honestly forgive him for it there was a um okay so <sighs> this is a huge long story and I really suck at telling you it but I'm trying my best here so okay before I overstep myself I um so after Joseph did that it was completely I was completely free of the experience I was completely free of it I was able to sleep again at night I tro totally shut myself down again was like yeah screw that I'm not talking to alien beings screw that <laughs> I've talked to loving alien beings but now this this is just too much and I've been through enough the last three months with all of the other crap this energy energy crap going on and I I just need to have normal I just need to have normal very very bad well anyway I was quite relieved to be able to go to sleep again at night and I was relieved to find out that story you know find out that was what the outcome was and it really touched my heart but I still wasn't real thrilled about all of that you know anyway several weeks had gone by and I kept seeing those aliens wanting to talk to me how do they talk to you they talk to you right here and so when there's an alien being that wants to talk to you, you usually see their face in here and then um, then you can either be like yeah or nah and then you just turn it off or you say okay and you open up to the conversation you don't have to talk to everybody who wants to talk to you you don't have to you know if somebody rings you up and you're like ooh, it's it's somebody scary I don't want anything to do with you just shut down thing is they kept calling me calling me calling me and it was like ugh, I'm busy I'm not talking to you stop talk stop trying to get my attention so finally a day came and it's interesting because Archangel Michael he'd come visit me at night before I'd fallen asleep and it was really refreshing and when I woke up that morning he was still there when I ate breakfast that morning he was still there I was like why are you still here he was there all day long I could I kept seeing him kept seeing him finally those blue aliens came to me in my mind again and it was like I get why you're here because I have to work on this and I have to see what they want and I just it helps me to have you you because it helps me feel like more safe or more comfortable I also that was also the day I did that Ipegus video and so that really helped me to warm up to alien beings too <laughs> it really helped me because I hadn't talked to Ipegus for a while as well so it was all good and so I took time and I had a conversation I actually videotaped it and I um I cry and I, I haven't shared it or anything I just, maybe I'll share it I, I don't know but 
I had a conversation with them, and um, I was pretty standoffish about it. I didn't want them to interact. I didn't want them to come back into my life and start ripping me to pieces again, and then I can't sleep at night, and I'm miserable. But actually, they came back to to make amends or create balance between us. How do you define that interaction? I'm emotional. They're not emotional. They aren't emotional at all. And But it was quite clear that they were wanting to make amends and they actually came into, and how we had a sort of conversation, the best I could define it is I, I told them that it really hurt my feelings. I told them that you know, I'm thankful that you chose to listen to Joseph and, and that you were that he was able to help create the understanding that you need. And I don't hold anything against you. And I get now that it's just two biological forms of two different natures. And your intention was not to harm me. So I can't really hate you for that. <laughs> and so in that case, I, I filled their hearts with love and let them know that we're unbalanced and so that actually cleared everything out and I haven't had interactions with them again since then so this is important for you to know it's important for you to know about my interaction with alien beings that have no emotions at all it's important for you to know why I have a hesitation towards those conversations because I have felt and experienced that sort of violation it's not enjoyable not to the extreme some people have some people who have have dealt with this on such a severe level, far more severe than I have. But at least it, it sort of creates the clarity I need to uh, be able to relate to other people better. Not only that, it creates more clarity about their relationship with us as it pertains to the astral plane. And so Joseph's video talks about his experience with, he's had many, many years of experience with the astral plane and demonic forces and souls that were very, very difficult for I mean to tolerate him <laughs> and he has had experiences being paralyzed in the astral plane and just like just like people say so great alien beings come before they abduct you you know they paralyze you you wake up in a space that looks just like your house what does the astral plane looks like looks like it looks just like your real house it looks just like your home and so when they how do they take you and then return you without anybody seeing you if they do it in the astral plane, nobody has a freaking clue it ever happened. How do they paralyze you without you being able to move? If they do it in the astral plane, they can do it very easily. And now you wake up not realizing you're in the astral plane. You wake up thinking that it's the 3D human reality. Now they've paralyzed you and now they're doing experiments on your astral body. And so he talks about how you can unparalyze yourself and how you can communicate with these alien beings in order to help bring an understanding and a balance between us and them and our relationship with them it's important they 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 do not have the emotions that we have they do not and they're scientific and they don't understand but you have a right to say i need you you to ask me for permission i need you have a right to say what your needs are and to to be honest with them about you not wanting this experience anymore. I don't want to have this experience with you anymore. You have a right to say these things. I think Joseph does a really good job of of identifying how you do that. And so I'm going to let you watch his video. And so you can get a feel for what he's like and, um, and what he has to share about this topic. So let's see. Okay, so I need to share something else here. I don't, I'm trying to keep the video short, but um, so Annabelle's healing was really important for me. And uh, the second video that I made, you'll see that like the first 10 or 15 minutes, I'm having to desensitize myself so that I can interact with these beings who are so, they look like greys, they're taller, skinnier, they're like in the six foot range. And they, they have big black eyes, but they're so, so loving. I was totally blown away. I did not expect that. I expect them to be emotionless, uncaring, unsensitive, not relating to harm they're causing our physical bodies. But they weren't. They were so loving. I was so thankful for that interaction. I mean, I cried throughout the video. There's so much love shared in that video. It, it changed me. 
it changed me a lot and so I've known that I need to make these this I need to make a video to talk about these different things to put them out there for people to have an awareness of our relationship with the astral plane our relationship with alien beings our relationship with the spirit realm what is the astral plane is the spirit realm and uh, to a, to the very thinnest layer of degree it looks exactly like this plane that we are on but it's a spiritual one it's not as dense or physical as this one so, and I need to talk about these interactions with these specific alien types, these types of alien beings. It's important. Um, it's important to create a positive message and positive voice. So that's all I have to share. Um, I'm asking my spirit guides if there's anything additional here. They're wanting me to indicate that um, that Joseph and I are really good friends and that in the very near future I'm going to be office, uh, offering dual spiritual healing services with him. So we'll both distance spiritual heal you at the exact same time. So instead of getting like one hour spiritual healing with me, you'll get one hour with me and with Joseph. And he's been doing um, recording his voice and then making a video with Northern Lights photos. So he actually takes pictures of the Northern Lights. It's, he's fantastic. He's super sweet, super loving human being, very, 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 very knowledgeable, lots and lots of life experience uh, interacting with spirits, um, even darker spirits. He's very good at going into really deep, dark places, helping to transform demonic for entities and... And transforming, you know, darker spaces, darker reflections of your infinite spiritual atmosphere, and then, um, and then doing soul fragment healing too. He's just phenomenal. So I'm making this video to introduce him, to inspire you to check out his channel and check out his video. And then, um, if you're interested in checking out his website, um, he's finally got it up. It's uh, Amin. It's www amenross.com and then I'll put it out here so you can um, know how to locate it. <laughs> Alright, thank you for watching and if you're interested in um, checking out my website um, exploring my uh, spiritual healing and psychic services um, please go to abbynormalswisdomquest.com Thank you for watching.